My home lab is powerful, but it's also power hungry, hot and loud, which honestly is because it's overkill for most of what I do. So I set out to answer the question, what if I could build a home lab that does 80% of what I need using a fraction of the power and for a reasonable price? In this video, I'll show you what I came up with and how downsizing my home lab allowed me to prioritize what I actually use to run leaner and more efficient without sacrificing all of the power. And it wasn't just my home lab that needed a more efficient setup. My workflow for WonderTech was just as messy. As WonderTech grew from a side project into a small business, it quickly became clear that my workflow wasn't sustainable. What started with video ideas scribbled on sticky notes or scattered across apps became a real bottleneck in my day-to-day -day operations. And once I started offering consulting services, staying organized while managing multiple clients became a serious challenge. That's when I turned to Monday.com, the sponsor of today's video. Monday.com has completely transformed the way I work. Every project, whether it's a video, a client request, or a sponsor collaboration, now has a structured workflow. I can track tasks from idea to execution, assign due dates, set priorities, and visualize progress at every stage. The mobile app ensures I stay connected and productive even when I'm not at my desk. And when it comes to consulting, I built an automation that creates a task directly from incoming client emails, so I never miss a request. As WonderTech expands, I'm working with more collaborators and preparing to bring on an editor. Monday.com is built for this kind of growth. It supports real teamwork, centralizes communication, and keeps everyone on the same page. If your job or business needs a more efficient, scalable way to manage projects and day-to-day -day operations, I highly recommend checking out Monday.com. You can try it for free using the link in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Now back to the build. The first problem I had to tackle was what I was going to use as my router and firewall. I currently run a UDM Pro Max, which I love, but it wasn't going to fit the bill for this build. I didn't want a PoE switch and access point, so I decided on a Unify Express 7, which gives me just about everything I need in a small form factor that's also power efficient. I configured it with four VLANs, a management VLAN for the Flex Mini 2.5G that I planned on using, a trusted VLAN for my devices and a few virtual machines, an IoT network, and a guest network. I created a few basic zones using the Unify zone-based firewall and created a few general firewall rules. Basically, the trusted VLAN should be able to access everything but the management VLAN and the IoT and guest VLAN should be isolated. This was accomplished using an untrusted zone that I created and the hotspot zone for the guest network. After that, I created a VPN server with WireGuard so that I can connect when I'm remote and a few Wi-Fi SSIDs, one each for trusted IoT and guest so that all of my devices would automatically connect up. Since I won't be using any other access points, I set the transmit power to high, modified the channel width settings for the five and six gigahertz bands, and created a few ethernet port profiles, because even though this is a small build, you should still follow best practices. While this is very basic compared to my current setup, it does exactly what I need for this build. With the Unify Express 7 configured, I was able to move on to the NAS. I wanted something with two and a half gig networking that had room for at least four NVMe drives and would be low power. The B-Link Mi Mini was the perfect option. It comes with an Intel N150 processor, 12 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage, a two terabyte NVMe SSD, and two two and a half gigabit NICs. And it has an integrated power supply. This thing is crazy, and I don't think there's any other way of describing it. The best part about this device is that it's actually a mini PC, so technically, we can do whatever we want with it. I installed TrueNAS Community Edition on it and added five 250 gigabyte Western Digital Red NVMe SSDs for testing. This isn't enough storage for long-term usage, but it was perfect for the setup and testing. After TrueNAS was installed, I configured a RAID Z1 pool with all five drives, created a data set for some media and apps, then installed Jellyfin. This is where I'll be hosting my media server and overall, it works well for what I need. I then configured snapshots to run on a nightly basis and all of my data sets. With this complete, I was able to move on to the hypervisor. For the hypervisor, I decided to go with a B-Link EQ14. 
which has the same Intel N150 processor as the Mi Mini, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. I installed Proxmox on it and restored virtual machines that I had for Docker and Home Assistant, as well as a Windows 11 virtual machine that I use pretty regularly. Out of all of the virtual machines that I run, these are three of the four most important ones, with Blue Iris being the sole exception, but we'll talk more about that later. These VMs solve most of my problems and are what I use 95% of the time. With the VM set up, I could move on to a little Proxmox tweaking. After updating Proxmox, I wanted to modify some of the network settings. Since the Flex Mini 2.5G that I'm using has five total ports, one is going to be used as an uplink for the Unify Express 7, but that leaves us with four ports to use. Since I'll be using two separate VLANs for these VMs, I figured that I should just give them each a dedicated NIC. The Proxmox hypervisor, Docker, and Windows 11 VMs will utilize the trusted VLAN, but I then configured the second NIC to operate on the IoT VLAN with a separate bridge. This technically provides interface separation, even though it's not really necessary for this setup. When that was done, I configured Proxmox to automatically back up to TrueNAS using an NFS share. Overall, not really much to gain with this setup, and I considered setting up an offline network directly between Proxmox and TrueNAS for backups, but that technically minimizes future expansion while providing minimal benefits since backups are configured to run overnight. With Proxmox set up, my low-powered home lab was complete. With this setup, I have Wi-Fi 7 for all of my devices, a mini PC with Proxmox running three of the four virtual machines that I regularly use, and a mini NAS running TrueNAS, and that's also running a Jellyfin media server. It was finally time to start using the system, and overall, things seemed to work well, but I did run into a few weird problems. The Mi Mini was running well with TrueNAS, but networking speeds maxed out around one and a half gigabits per second, rather than the two and a half gigabits per second that I was expecting. Not a major problem, especially for a setup like this, but it's worth mentioning as I can't really figure out why, which also means that there could be underlying hardware issues causing it. The virtual machines also run slower than I'm used to, but I also went from a very performant home server with a Ryzen 9700X processor and DDR5 memory to a more power efficient setup with an Intel N150 processor and DDR4 memory. At the end of the day, it's still fast enough to use, but this isn't a setup that can really scale. I can run a few VMs and Linux containers or scale out, meaning I can add a second or third B-Link EQ14 and set them up as a cluster but that goes against what I'm trying to do with this build. At this point, everything was running and running well, but this never answered my question though of how much power a setup like this will run at. I mean, my current home lab, which doesn't even include all of my hardware, is running at around 700 watts on a regular basis. And if I took the other hardware I have into the equation, it would be well over 800. What does shrinking that setup down due to the power consumption with the understanding that I only hit about 80% of the services that I run on a regular basis. It's literally less than 50 watts, averaging around 42 to 45 watts during regular use. That's over 90% less from a power consumption perspective than I am currently running, and only around six to 7% in total. I knew the power consumption would be low, but I don't think I realized it would be this low. That's a NAS, a Proxmox hypervisor running three virtual machines with room for more, a fully segregated network with Wi-Fi 7, and a small two and a half gigabit switch, and it runs at less than 50 watts. Now, it's not fair to say that this hits everything because it doesn't. The big thing that I'm currently missing is an NVR, but if I really wanted to, I can swap out the Unify Express 7 with a Unify Dream Router 7, flip the Unify Flex Mini 2.5G with the Flex 2.5G and get a few ubiquity cameras to use with Unify Protect as my NVR. It would be higher from a power consumption perspective, mainly due to the PoE cameras, but that with another 16 gigabytes of RAM and the B-Link Mini PC running Proxmox would hit 100% of my requirements and still probably run at less than 100 to 120 watts, which then led to a question that I never really thought about. What am I running in my full home lab? 
And does it justify the massive hardware and power consumption that's required for it to run 24 seven? And the short answer is yes, I couldn't run this full time. I have a lot of data, way more than a mini NAS like this could support. And I try and follow good backup practices. So I need at least one, but realistically two NAS devices running three and a half inch hard drives with all of my data. I also love my NVR system and have far more cameras than I should and wouldn't want to scale back to only a few to save power. I also love the fact that my Proxmox cluster is set up with high availability. And in the event that one of my nodes goes down, the other will pick right up to avoid downtime. So what am I saying? This was a cool experiment and really cool when you take into consideration that I could run this short term with minimal impact, but there's a reason I run all of the hardware that I do. It's also crazy that from a price perspective, if you bought all of the hardware, excluding the NVMe drives, it would be around 580 to 590 US dollars. That's still a lot, but for an entire home lab, it's really not that bad. But when NVMe SSDs are 16 terabytes and cost the same as a 16 terabyte hard drive today, that's when I'll officially be making changes. But for now, the home lab will live on. As always, thanks for watching. And again, if you're looking for a better way to streamline and stay on top of your projects, like I do with all of my WonderTech videos and consulting work, check out monday.com using the link in the description or the pinned comment. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.